Okay, you're looking at a Roberts radio manufactured between 1964 and 1967. These pictures are not uh, of my own radio, although mine is the same colouring and looks pretty similar. Um, I've started hacking mine to bits, and I'll show you that in a moment. Um, this is how it looked originally. Unfortunately, it packed in and I uh, decided it wasn't worth repairing, so uh, I'm going to make it into a Bluetooth speaker. But I want to keep the external appearance, which is just beautiful. Um, the design of the thing is, is just wonderful. Um, I must have been about three years old in 1965 when it was our one and only family radio. We had this and a Dunset, uh, a Bush uh, Dunset record player um, uh, that my mother used both of them to listen to classical music. Uh, we had blaring out all the time from them. And uh, I suspect this was permanently tuned to Radio 3, the Roberts radio. Um, beautiful design, uh, lovely rounded edges, um, just a, just a perfect uh, proportions and uh, portable with that nice soft handle on it. Unfortunately, um, the uh, transistors were unreliable. The AF117 transistors, there were three of them, uh, had a habit of shorting out internally, and uh, I think that's what's happened to the uh, near-perfect model that I had uh, that uh, now doesn't work, so I've decided to rip it out. Now, in, uh, you're looking at the inside there, um, you can see the three transistors. Um, we'll have a look at those in a moment close up. Um, there's the battery holder compartment there on the left that is riveted to the uh, chassis. It's actually uh, quite hard to take out from the rivets and so I just bent it off um, and the metal fatigue through bending it snapped off. I'll show you that in, uh, in a moment. You're looking at the uh, transistors. They're the round ones and you, if you look carefully you can see it says AF117 on them. Um, now I, I did give them a tap. One of them, one of them actually when I tapped it um, brought the radio back to life but uh, uh, not permanently, so I'm pretty sure that uh, that particular transistor shorted out. Now, we'll get to my particular model in a, in a moment. Here we go. Okay, um, back to the uh, internal picture there. Just one more thing that I'd like to point out here. Um, there are two wooden blocks, they're kind of wedges, one on each side at the bottom there that hold an N-shaped chassis in, uh, in there. The chassis drops in and then and up and the wedges go in. Uh, to get the chassis out you need to pull out those wedges and lower the chassis once the knobs are off. Um, there is a battery holder there, uh, the, the, the uh, steel plate you see that the battery goes against that is riveted onto the side. Um, unfortunately, it's difficult to get the rivets out, and what I ended up doing was just bending the whole left side there from one side to the other, and the metal fatigue uh, bent it off, so I've, um, I've, I've ripped one side off. Don't quite know how I'm going to support that, but it will somehow be done. Um, now, this is my, uh, my own uh, model. Um, after I've ripped it about a bit, and we're going to look and see uh, the inside of it now. You can see it's in quite good condition, the um, casing there. Now, the, here is the uh, what I mean. On the left side there, I have actually just bent to one side and the other um, to, to get it off completely. Uh, so it's no longer an end shape. Um, that uh, left side is missing. I've left the potentiometers on there. Um, I'm going to, in fact, have saved the uh, the on-off potentiometer as well, which I hope to use as an on-off switch. Of course, I won't need to do any tuning. It's going to be a Bluetooth radio, um, uh, but it would uh, be nice if the, if the knobs, if it still looked uh, as it should. So I'm going to put it all back together again, looking as it should. Uh, and therefore I've left those two potentiometers on there. This is the roller speaker, the one speaker that uh, is inside it. Uh, it's a nice little speaker, but I'm going to put a stereo board in there and um, fit some stereo speakers in, some uh, three and a quarter inch round speakers. 
Uh, this is the board now. Um, this this is an very, an old board. I, I used to do. Pro- reminds me of some of the boards I built at uh, college, when we took um, circuit boards and actually um, f- uh, filled out the um, circuit uh, one side with a pen, and then dropped it in, in an acid bath to burn away the copper. You'll see in a moment the underneath of it. But I'm sh- I'm just showing you these three transistors. They are the AAF or one one seven transistors that are prone to failing in this particular model I did actually bash uh, bash one of them with a screwdriver and it brought it uh, back to life for a moment so I'm pretty sure that's that's what the fault was um, uh, and I decided well either I fix it or I create a Bluetooth speaker and actually a Bluetooth speaker at this point in time would be more useful to me um, I used to uh, listen to uh, MP3s in the garden by um, uh, broadcasting them, basically, by having my own radio station, um, which is quite powerful, actually. Yeah, about 300 yards up the road, I walked up uh, to post a letter once and with my head- headphones on and managed to get my own radio station 300 yards up at the post box. Um, so, uh, of course, highly illegal. You're not really supposed to do that. But um, uh, this is the uh, potentiometer, which um, uh, or the on-off switch. What's going to be the on-off switch? It originally was off, and then it went from medium wave to long wave. I'm going to fit it back in there. I'm going to. You have to use a multimeter to find out what on-off is. Um, and these are the knobs. As you can see, the, the, the brass topping to the knobs on my model has uh, gone very dull. I'm going to see if I can try and uh, use some metal polish to shine those up just a little bit, although they, they might leave them as, as they are because they look look okay and they're quite authentic. Um, this is the wooden wedge, or one of the wooden wedges that went in. You'll see um, the chassis originally went in and upwards and then the uh, wedge uh, kept it there um, now of course the wedge uh, I'm not I'm going to be able to use the wedge on one side the other side I haven't quite figured out how I'm going to hold that up but it uh, it'll be done maybe just a, a, a piece of plywood or something um, those parts there they're all bits and pieces that I've kept in case I want to use them some of them I'm going to use the, the felt uh, goes underneath the the volume knobs um, I shouldn't think I would will need the battery connector because I'm planning to use a uh, battery a different kind of battery box in fact let's have a look at the battery box uh, now now you can see the the, the case is completely empty there um, I'll have a look at the battery box in a moment um, this is just a, a piece of hardboard um, that the speaker originally went on to um, I'm going to basically find some way of, of putting the two three and a quarter inch speakers in side by side there this is the metal grill um, it's a little bit dirty I may try and get a, a replacement grill because you can still get parts off eBay um, and I'm a bit of a perfectionist and there is the case completely empty um, out with nothing at all in it ready to go um, so we'll get on with making a Bluetooth speaker I'm going to be able to listen to my uh, uh, MP3s in the garden as I always have done but instead of broadcasting them um, from a hi-fi system using a transmitter um, I'm going to be able to broadcast them now um, because I have a smartphone like everybody else from my smartphone um, the same music, but um, just a slightly different uh, delivery. Okay, now, um, this is the board I'm going to use. It's uh, um, the preview of the video I'm watching at the moment while I'm doing the narration. is so small that I can't see the number, but you can see that number there. It's a chip used in a lot of boards, so the amplifier chip. Uh, if you Google it, you'll find a few boards out there with this chip in it. This particular board I really like because it's uh, just a very neat board. It's got um, a DC uh, input, barrel input. Um, it's got uh, nice uh, screw terminals there for the speakers, um, left, right. 
um, stereo. It's got five little push switches for the transport and for the volume. I've since discovered that the volume actually, if you if you take out the power to it and put on power, the volume starts at about seventy five percent, which is which is perfect really for for anything that, that for a board like this that's enclosed in something, and you're not actually going to be using those switches. I'm not going to be using those switches. I just want to be able to control the thing from my mobile phone. So um, I don't need those switches at all, and it's perfect that it's at 75% at when the uh, when the card switches uh, when the power switched on. Now the plan the plan is to use this card in that uh, chassis somehow uh, in the box and uh, use a flat um, battery pack here with 10 AA batteries. Um, at 1.5 volts. Now they're never really 1.5 volts, especially if you use rechargeables, which I'm going to be doing, and they can vary really from 1.2 to 1.5 volts. Um, but you're going to be getting over 12 volts with 10 of them, um, which is or which is the important thing. So I decided uh, 10 of them would be fine. Um, it's uh, it's flat, so it will hopefully just lay on the uh, on the base of the uh, inside inside the the, the box. Um, it's going to be easy enough to wire it up to the potentiometer that I showed you earlier. Um, once I discover which um, co uh, connections um, will make a switch, um, and 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 actually use the uh, the old um, on off. Um, on the radio to, to switch the Bluetooth speaker on and off. The batteries I'm going to use are a brand by Sanyo. Um, they're called Any Loop. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, this is a little known secret. They are by far the best rechargeable batteries out there. I've tried them all. Um, Sanyo Any Loop um, batteries are amazing. They are uh, advertised as holding 70% of their charge after five years lying on the shelf. So you can charge them up, leave them on a shelf for five years, and they still hold 70% of their charge. And it is amazing, actually. You can charge the things up, and they are fully charged months later when you pull them out to use them. Um, this particular... Uh, they come in two, two different versions. I'm going to be using these white ones, um, they're not for high powered stuff, the white ones. Um, they do have, I'll show you in a moment, a different uh, version of the batteries. Um, yeah, the double X, any loop double X batteries that are a black battery. And they are designed to go into cameras and anything that needs a heavy, heavy load. Um, I don't need to put them, they're, they're quite expensive actually, these batteries, both the white ones and the double X but they are well worth paying for um, the uh, the Bluetooth speaker that I'm building here doesn't need the double X um, so we're just going to go with the white ones and of course there's going to be 10 of them in there um, they are pretty expensive but they're easy enough to charge up and uh, they they last longer than others and as I say they hold their charge and you don't have to worry about them nearly as much this uh, is um, an FR8 um, Visiton speaker that I'm going to use. I used the FR, I think it's the FR9, the 4-inch uh, one, in a previous project. You may have seen my, my little Art Deco speaker cabinet. Anyway, I'm going to put two of these ones in there. They're 3 and a quarter inch, and they should just fit inside that uh, cabinet. Lovely little speakers. So, that's the plan. Um, I've ordered all the parts, uh, making the first part of this video, which is going to be tacked on to the second part, and uh, hopefully uh, the, the uh, plan will come together, and um, I'll be able to sit in the garden and uh, listen to some radio shows on this lovely little icon of British design, the R300 radio.